I'm joined with Dylan Villain, the singer of The Wild. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. How are you, Victoria? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. So, congrats on your new record release there. How do you feel to finally have that out for people to listen to? Uh, thanks very much. I feel good. Uh, it's been a very interesting time to release a, ra- a rock record, um, a record of any genre for that matter. Um, you know, we didn't, of course, see any of this coming. No- nobody in the world did. Um but uh, so there, there are, you know, there are challenges and frustrations about it coming out without obviously being able to tour it. Um, you know, as, as you know, we've had a lot of tour dates that have been canceled and rescheduled as a result of the pandemic we're all facing at the moment. Um, so, yeah, like, you know, it's, it's a tough time. But on the positive side of things, um, I think a lot of people really needed um, something to escape, you know, the everyday thoughts of, in stresses of all this stuff that's going on. So, um, you know, if we can be the soundtrack to a bit of, uh, you know, people's good time and, and, you know, to ease their worries and give them something to feel good about and, and, you know, forget about all this mess for a while. That's something that, uh, we would be proud to do and happy to do. Yeah, for sure. And it's gotten a pretty good response so far. So how does it feel to have such great support from your fans? It feels really good. I, um, yeah again it was it was it was so strange to you know because we we, you know there's so much going that goes into an album release behind the scenes um and you know momentum leading up to it and tour dates and all that stuff so to have it you know um to come out and then have be had this news hit us where we you know things were definitely not going to be the way that we planned them to be um that was a bit you know a bit of a blow to take, so to speak. And, um, you know, the, the way, the one thing that's been really helping us get through it is to see all the love and support from all our fans all over the world that have just, you know, never like the, the, never stopped with the messages and the comments and the things and all that, and showing all the support and just saying how much they really love and appreciate the record. And, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff that makes it all worthwhile, you know? It's it, despite all the stuff we're going through again, you know, it's it's a good thing to to give people an escape from all this stuff. But also it's just to see the, 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 the everybody's just getting joy out of it and supporting us. It's um, it's there's nothing I can really say besides thank you to everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And when you're in the studio recording this album, did you have a favorite song that you recorded? Hmm. You know what? This record's really special to me. Um, for a lot of different reasons. Um, so I will say like that, not to play, you know, the, the, uh, bit of a cliche thing to say, they're all my favorite, but, uh, I'll be honest with you that they, they really are for different reasons and every, and all of them got, um, their own, you know, their own, uh, they all got the right attention to put into them. You know what I mean? Cause, because we really, we really put a lot of focus on getting all the songs right. And, yeah. um, I just really think that we, we really worked hard on getting every song as good as it could be to the point where it was, you know, we knew it was done sometimes on, when you're making a record, you have these moments where you feel, you could feel like something could be different about a song or that could have been changed or this could have been changed. But with this record, I can honestly say that I was really, really satisfied with every song on it. And uh, that's a very rare thing for me. So I was, uh, it feels good. I really enjoy every song on the record. If I had to pick one, I might say Bad News. I really like Yeah, that's that's probably my favorite one off the record. It's a it's a good one. Right on. And it's, like. it's an awesome one to start the record off with, too. Yeah, exactly. And when you, like you said, you were very happy with the way it turned out. But were there any songs that um you originally heard differently in your head than what they turned out to be? Um, not, no, not necessarily. Not on this record because, um, you know, third record of ours and, um, you know, the third record that Mike Fraser and I have produced together, you do things enough times, you kind of get an idea of what it's going to be um, and how it's going to sound. And you also get really good at communicating with each other and understanding what you're trying to achieve. And I think that was one of the biggest things um, that made this record extra special is, is that, you know, that connection and that, um, that comfort as just, um, 
a working relationship in a working environment of being able to communicate so well. That's the thing about making records is it's, you, it's some it's one person, an artist has something in their head and they're trying to convey what that sounds like or how it makes them feel to an engineer, to a producer, to, you know, to, to, to these different factions that make all make up making a, a record. And then it's, um, a producer or an engineer or whatever, trying to understand what that person is saying and then make that sound happen yeah. the way that we're hearing it. So it's all really, it's really all boils down to communication and how, well, you're able to do that. Luckily, Mike and I are, you know, the best of friends and have been for a number of years and talk very often uh, as friends outside of work. So I think that lends to the working the working process. And uh, yeah, so to answer your question, I, I just I think that because of that, we you know there was there wasn't really many surprises. We we knew what we wanted to do and we went out and we just spent the time on it until we got it to sound the way we wanted it to. Yeah, for sure. And what were some of your inspirations while you were writing songs to put on this record? Oh, you know, it's always the same sort of things with me, but uh, this record, you know, I will say there is a few new sorts of sounds and feels on this record for sure. You know, it's all stuff that I've been listening to and, and always been influenced by, but I think I just wore some of the more punk rock influences a little more heavily on my sleeve with this record. You know, bands like um, Social Distortion, of course, uh, some early, uh, the early Green Day stuff that was happening when I was growing up, um, and, uh, you know, Super Suckers, bands like that, and, uh, yeah, just just that, that punk rock, you know, the rock and roll side of punk rock, and, um, you know, some maybe some Ramones and stuff, but those are, these are bands that we've always listened to, and every guy in the band enjoys and, you know, is influenced by. It's just, I think on this record, we wanted to do... We knew what we wanted to do. Basically, I wrote Bad News, and I knew that that was going to be the direction of this whole album. Yeah. And every, everyone in the band was really keen on it, and you know, Mike was really keen on it, and everyone really liked it. And so when I wrote that song, I knew that that was going to be the direction, and I just started writing in it. And all that stuff came out in, in it. And, um, all those influences came out in it. But then there's still this, the, the same old stuff with us, the... You know, the, the ACDC and the Motorhead and the ZZ Top stuff. And then, you know, it's just like a, a big amalgamation of, I think, touring a lot over the last three years and understanding what we really wanted to do with this record. And then just putting it in motion and saying, hey, we're going to go do it. And then did it as best as, as we, we possibly could. Yeah. And you guys were supposed to be going on tour, but that got postponed. Uh, where, where were you supposed to be going? Yeah, we were, uh, right when we found out um, about all this stuff, we were scheduled to be leaving to, to fly out to Budapest. Um, I think that was the first show in Budapest. So yeah, the, the, the album release tour is a full uh, European run. Um, so, you know, uh, Budapest, Germany, uh, Switzerland, uh, France, London... Uh, Italy, Spain, I, I, I can't even remember all the routing right off the top of my head, but it's a full European run, 17 shows, 14 of them were sold out, um, and uh, then uh, we were unable to do that, you know, we're, yeah. we just, it's, it's a tough thing, but, you know, we weren't the only band affected by it, and um, after that run got cancelled, uh, our North American dates in May got cancelled, and now uh, everything for June, July, and August is looking like it's the same. Um, the stuff that we have in the fall. Think about you know the thing about it is like you get a, you have all these dates planned, and of course you don't announce them all right away. You know you wait throughout the year to sort of trickle things out. Yeah. Um, as as you know the record progresses and as certain tours finishes, you announce you know your next ones or whatever. So the thing that's working in our favor is we haven't announced all the dates that we have for the year, but it, we're kind of at this thing right now where we just, we're definitely not announcing anything at the moment because we just don't know what the future looks like. Yeah, exactly. But even though you had to postpone all these tour dates, um, you guys did a Facebook live stream that was like a pretty much full-blown concert. You guys had lights set up and stuff. Where did you get the idea to put on such a cool concert? Well, it- a couple things um i've seen a lot of people 
and I'm not knocking anybody out there. So, you know, let me just start off by saying that, but I've seen a lot of people at home doing, um, uh, quarantine stream concerts from their iPhones and things like that. And I thought, well, that's, that's cool. It's, you know, it's great that people are bringing their music to the fans during this time. That's, that's fantastic. And I think that's really cool. But the thing about my band uh, and us guys in the band is we've always liked to do things 10 steps <laughs> a bigger or better than everybody else. It's just kind of in our nature to be that way. So we thought, how can we make this, you know, something beyond just setting up a, a webcam or, or a camera and, and whatever and just playing some songs? We really wanted to, you know, bring a bring the rock show to people that couldn't come to our show. So um, there's a, our, our front of house uh, engineer, the guy who does our sound on the road, uh, Kyle Moore, he's a good friend of ours and, you know, been working for us for a long time. Um, he had this idea to do it, uh, to, to actually make the idea real. And uh, we approached a production warehouse in our hometown of Kelowna, British Columbia, and uh, they got on board and we built the rig and we just went and did it. And it was, uh, it was awesome. And, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. I will say that it's not the same, obviously, as playing to a, a crowd of people who are there to see you and know your lyrics and, and yeah. you know, want to get into the moment and have that, that big reaction. Because that's the whole thing about playing live is the, the band plays – the music, the music hits the people, the people react to the band, the band gets excited about the reaction, and it's just this big cycle of energy of people getting really excited and having a good time, and that's what makes the live experience so important. But um, something is better than nothing. So despite the fact that there was no people there and it was really awkward finishing songs and not having people, you know, yeah. <laughs> yelp or whatever, um, it's still really fun, and I'm glad we did it because uh, we really needed it, and I think people out there the fans needed it just as bad as we did yeah it was pretty i i enjoyed it it was pretty cool um and before all this COVID 19 stuff uh you guys got to do a full cross canada tour at the small venues that you guys played when you were first starting at a band um how much fun was that to do oh it was awesome um it had been a long time since we played rooms like that um some of those places we haven't played in uh you know eight years um, so it was really cool to see all, you know, all the, the people that work there that we've known that, that, you know, like they get, they were there for us at the very start, you know, and, uh, we've never forgotten that we've never forgotten our roots and lost, lost touch with those people and those sorts of relationships. Um, so it was really cool to just go back and, and punk rocket and just, you know, just really, uh, kick up some dust with some old friends. And then, you know, you see all the all these small venues just rammed full of people and you know whether it's we're playing big rooms or big festivals or small rooms like that we play the same as we always do yeah and, uh, and we we love it. It, it for all the, in a way i want to say that it was almost cooler than playing some of the bigger rooms that we've been playing in the last couple of years it just it just there's this feeling of uh just authenticity and realness about it that we we just love and we were never that band that's beyond that and we started out doing that and we can still do it we don't need the big production we don't rely on the big production to make a good rock show it's all about what's in your heart and what you're able to put on the stage and out to the people again it's that big cycle i was talking about earlier and you know it, it's it was something that i think was really special not only uh to the fans but really to us as well yeah and how did it feel to have all those show, shows sold out yeah it was cool you know it was uh, i don't want to say like uh we we kind of thought that it could happen because it, you know they're significantly smaller rooms and yeah than we're used to playing or whatever but uh it was really cool man and it made for a good t-shirt yeah it did <laughs> all all the leftover t-shirts just printed that on them <laughs> yeah that was awesome and um and you guys have been a band like you said for a while and what are some uh other bands that you take inspiration from whether it's from uh how you perform live on stage or your songwriting style or just who you are in general yeah there's lots of bands i mean the, uh, yeah this is a good question because i feel a lot of people out there um are used to painting us with the same brush you know people when you talk about a rock band in 2020, it seems everybody wants to talk about, you know, the bigger acts like ACDC, yeah. Motorhead, or 
maybe not even Motorhead, ACDC, Motley Crue, Van Halen, Metallica. Like these are bands that we love. Don't don't kid yourself. And these are bands that we've always loved, and they do play an influence in our upbringing um, and making us the musicians that we are. But you know, I can't t- I can't I can't be more honest in saying that when I'm writing a, ro- a wild song, I'm not trying to write a Van Halen song. Yeah, I'm not trying to. Uh, an ACDC song. These are bands that I like, though. So for us, um, some of the more, uh, you know, ones that are maybe not as mainstream that people, uh, you know, don't want, weren't first know of, maybe, you know, the would be like bands like I was saying earlier, like Social Distortion is a, one of my favorite bands and, and has been since I was like 12 years old, 13 years old. Um, Mike Ness is a fantastic songwriter, you know, just great great punk rock and rock and roll music um uh super suckers another fantastic punk rock rock and roll band eddie spaghetti you know we we were we played with them when we were uh just just brand new i think i was like eight eight years ago or something and you know we've always loved them as a band and so it was really cool back then and they've always been a part of the the feel of the band and you know, but then there's, of course, there's the Motorhead thing with us and ACDC, early ACDC and ZZ Top, of course, you know, with some of the choreography that they've incorporated into their live stuff. And for me, the that, that whole thing with the, the choreography and the live show was a lot of it was watching James Brown when I was younger. James Brown was such a great performer and, uh, you know... I saw him do it, and I saw the way that he and his band would slide and stuff together and move it together in unison, and I thought, well, why can't somebody do it in rock music? Yeah. Because ZZ Top has always been doing it, but they're like a very much a blues rock band, but nobody was doing it like in a really high-intensity, high-octane, hard rock scenario, so that's kind of where all that stuff came from, and yeah, I don't know, uh, some of the other bands, I could talk about bands that I like all night, so we'll just go with those. 